Me and Kelly thought it would be an amazing idea to talk about um, well, one to not wear pants. Yeah, well, she has no pants on. I actually you have on actually, like tiny pants. Yeah, but still, I have pants on, which is very rare for me. Yeah. But we were chit chatting in the car, and we both were like, it would be amazing if we did a video on what we're both really good at. Good at good that. Good at that. <laughs> what? See what we was good at that. <laughs> what we was good at that is public speaking. Yeah, I'm really bad at public speaking, but. We thought it would be smart to do a video on what we're both good at because I think we bounce ideas off each other so yeah. much. Like we've been friends for a really long time and people know us for always being like super silly together mm -hmm. and cutting up and acting crazy and like that's like 95% of the time. Absolutely. But to be honest, we're both like obsessed with work. It's really good to have somebody who is driven like you are because every idea is not a good idea right mm -hmm. and or you might have a good idea that just needs a little bit of tweaking or you just need to talk it through like sometimes even just saying stuff out loud helps you to just clean it up a bit it's really good because i always say that like i always want to learn from people around me and i usually mm -hmm. don't have a lot of people around me because i keep such a close circle and i don't like fuck with a lot of people so it's like there's things that we're both really good at and things that we're not so good at and I think that balances it because she's really good at like constantly coming up with ideas and refreshing like her blog and like her career and coming up with like constantly new ideas. I know strategic like strategic ways to post what days are good to post on social media and what interacts well and I think that's why we both do so well together because we're bouncing what our positives are and filling in what's negative. Like, I didn't use hashtags for the first, like, two years of Instagram. <laughs> I thought they were so repulsive. <laughs> and I but was like, it, you need to get up on some hashtags. But it was the reason why my account didn't grow the way that everyone else's did mm -hmm. for that time before the algorithms started, like, messing with you. I did not use hashtags for forever. Yeah. And you told me to and I didn't listen and now I pay the lesson. But once I did, it really started changing everything. And it's like the same thing with my Instagram isn't really aesthetically pleasing. It's sort of just like, I don't really see myself as like aspirational. I see it as in just very relatable. If I do a video of me dancing or whatever, I just throw it up. I don't edit it. I was just like, oh, this is me and that's it. I'll put like me wearing face bleach or whatever. And that's really my style. But I know brands like things that are like pretty. And so I've been trying to get better at it and so she'll be like, you need to brighten this photo up like this or like make the exposure like this to make it a certain way so that it's something that brands would want to work with. So I've been trying to, and my thing is, is like I usually just put raw photos up, like if my cellulite's in or whatever, I just put it up. Like, I feel that's good though. Like I yeah. feel like people need to know, one, you barely have any cellulite, like she really doesn't have much, that's just the <laughs> oh, truth. Oh, my butt cheeks have a lot. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. not on your legs, because that was a conversation I just had with someone today. There's, really? like, nothing on her thighs. It's disturbing. But it's true. Like, so my Instagram is very aesthetic, and I don't like to just throw anything up. And, like, hers isn't. But then we kind of meet in the middle of terms of point of views. Like, you know, you do want to show your personality. So for me, like, I show my personality in the caption, you know. Or, like, you know that I like pretty things. I like things to be very... Like, you understand my aesthetic from looking at my Instagram, mm -hmm. but then my, like, wacky, fun part of my personality comes out in the caption, which no, peop no nobody reads. But I do laugh when, like, the one person is reading it and they're, like, cracking mm -hmm. up because, like, I said some really off-color crazy shit <laughs> and no one noticed because no one reads the captions. Nobody barely ever No one. Captions. I don't even know what that's about. No, but what I'm saying, though, is, is, like, that's when we, like, bounce each other's ideas off each other and then help each other, especially when it comes to social media. And it's, like blogging yeah. business and it's like how she was, how I was saying earlier that brands like things that are aesthetically pleasing like what else do you think that brands always look for um i would say my biggest tip for like engaging with a brand is to pick brands that make sense to your brand so you wouldn't write lily pulitzer and say hey can i wear some of your really preppy bright colors and mm -hmm. you know like that's not a brand that makes sense to your brand. Make sure that you check you check off all the things on their list. Yeah. You know, like do you have a good visually pleasing Instagram account? Like are you engaging? You know, do you answer your comments and stuff like that? But also don't be afraid to like reach out to a brand. Cause that's something we talk about a lot. I reach out, the basis of my whole career was me reaching out to brands. Like I literally had 
an email that I acted like my own agent for like two or three years. If I couldn't handle something, if it was too big of a contract, I would send it to her. But I also feel like, you know, not being afraid to reach out, not being afraid to make a suggestion. But when you write to a, I would say another big tip for like how to in in interact with a brand is like, when you reach out to a brand, kind of acting like people owe you something is very off-putting like it's not ever gonna get someone to warm up to you saying like hey here are my followers i have this much why aren't you working with me that is not how to do it you need to say like hey i'm a big fan of your brand this is what this is my brand this is what i do here are my accounts i've featured you before maybe take a look at this old post um i'd love to work with you and then be specific like here are the ideas you can't just be like, hey, you want to work together. I've literally written Boohoo like, hey, I want to do Very a capsule collection of 15 pieces that are specifically like this. And I already have like it mapped out what I want. And they know that you're really interested in it rather than just throwing ideas out there. Like they know you know what you want. So if they have it in their budget and they can execute it, then you reached out to hundreds of companies. So many. always saying, but people will think like, oh, Nadia just got this or the cheese just handed that or whatever or you just know someone here or there it's like the number of no's you have to get to get a yes yeah. is so hardcore right and it's like and it's the training your brain that no doesn't mean no for everyone and just because they say no now doesn't mean they're gonna say no in the future yeah, like that's a big one yeah because I started wearing boohoo like boohoo I always go back to boohoo because it was my first like capsule collection and I wore boohoo for two years straight and I had pitched to them when I had like 90,000 followers come out with the castle collection with me. And it wasn't anything to them. But then when I kind of sort of convinced them, hey, you guys should do plus. And then I'm like, hey, I should model your plus. And then I'm like, hey, now would be a good time to create this collection and I want 20 pieces and I want it to look like this. And then they said yes. Like, you're building up a relationship. That's also another thing is like, I've, we both shut down tons of money i don't take everything i get never there are brands who don't fit my entire being and i'll shut down like ten thousand dollars if it means that i don't want my fans and my followers to see that it's not authentic because i'm very all about what works for me so i'll shut down a ton of money if that means that i'm being true to me and my brand yeah. because when they see you're just doing sponsored posts to just to do it for the fuck of it People are going to see past that and see it all as a money thing. In terms of turning stuff down, I think the dope thing about, you know, this video to me for both of our readers is that people think, um, you know, Nadia has like half a million followers, you know, and my blog has, you know, a, a great readership, but it, my blog is much more popular than my social media. But my social media, my Instagram is 25K, you know. Plus, and mine's the opposite. And it's the opposite. So the thing is, though, what I'm saying is, you have like a huge following and then like this mid-sized following where um, you can't say that Nadia gets something because she has this many followers because I have opportunities too. So it's really like utilizing what you have and being smart about it, you know, and knowing your strong points, knowing your strong points. But also you don't you shouldn't think if you don't have a huge following that um, nothing is accessible to you or that a brand wouldn't work with you. That's the point I'm trying to get at. Yeah. You can't say like, oh, I'm too small or I don't have 100K yet on this social media channel or that channel. It's like brands are recognizing engagement and like excellent work, you know? Like it's just, like, yeah, it's like, but it makes me think like I didn't have that back when I first started. Yeah. Five years ago, like even the plus size community, the industry, it wasn't like a big thing. Mm -hmm. So if I was getting work then, I literally from nothing, then there's opportunity everywhere you look. There's opportunity everywhere. Exactly. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people may feel like they, if they're just starting out, for example, they may think that they can't do this or that. Yeah, is every brand gonna pay you? So I when do you're stuff starting, for free still. still. So I why? still do things for free all Here the time. I've been doing this trial and error for so long. Like my whole Instagram is all trial and error. The blog is trial and error. How many times for your blog have you said, I come up with this idea, I'm going to do it, and then you backtracked and you figured out something else was going to work for you? Mm -hmm. Like, now you spend most of your time doing YouTube videos and things that you know are going to be beneficial and they work. But like, I know what's going to have my readers talking like i'm much more of a lifestyle blogger than a fashion blogger at this point um so yeah but you're so much more polished and like put together than a lot of bloggers so 
Thanks. <laughs> I think that's it though. Well, and I mean, great, thank you. But like, it's not all I want to do. It's like, you can make the best steak in the world, but you still don't want to eat steak every day, right? Like, yeah, sure. you have to diversify. Like, I have to be able to express all of my interests, and my interests are kind of very lifestyle. And I like posting kind of friend stuff. Like, yeah. I don't mind posting a selfie of me and my friends or something funny, because it's like, I'm a human and other people are in my life. Yeah. It's okay to put other humans on my Instagram, you know? And do we have to? No, no, I'm totally no, I post like personal, like boyfriend stuff. The shit goes crazy. Yeah, people like saying. Want to know too. what's going on? You know what I mean? She thinks of things when there's something to think of. Like <laughs> literally, like, like literally, <laughs> like for herself and for like brands, she thinks of shit like that. I wouldn't even think. Can we? A bit. Let me tell you what she thought about yesterday when we were Mexican food. Yes, I'm a branding person, and you know, I've been doing this a long time, and it's my job to think of things because that's. You have to work with what you're naturally good at. So That's if I'm an idea huge. person, mm -hmm. then I need to utilize that. I think of things like whether it's for myself, for my friend, for a brand. So if I think of things, I need to focus on that. A little work for yourself is like you're investing more than a 95. You're like working. You'll work you know, harder for yourself. Yeah. Harder than you ever work for anyone else. Exactly. Because you're invested exactly. and you should be. Some people will say like, oh, I don't know how you work from home. I would just be like watching TV all day. I'm like, no. I don't turn the TV on all day. Like, or if you feel like you're in one of those lazy moods where you want to lay around, I will literally get dressed and go to a coffee shop. Yeah. You have to, it's, it's all on your you. brain. Yeah, it's training like, your we're brain. All, it's all on you, right? Like your success is all on you. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, well, the company, you can blame the company or the team or the someone didn't do something. Whatever you have or do not have, mm -hmm. it's up to you. I'll get in like really depressed moods where I don't leave the house for four or five days because I'm like working like constantly and I'll be so isolated and not want to leave. And she'll be like, you know, well, you need to breathe or whatever. And I remember I was super sad a while ago. And I remember it was so nice what you said to me. But like shifted my whole like thought process because what I'm saying with jobs on the internet and bloggers, you don't understand the impact you have. So even if you're a smaller blogger and you're just starting off or whatever, it's you're still impacting somebody's life. And you have to understand that this job is more than just like clothes and getting free things and getting paid by big brands and having them notice you. Whether or not you're, you know, getting paid a ton of money. But what I'm saying is like Kelly was saying maybe like a year ago or whatever, when I didn't know what to do with my brand and I didn't know where I want to live at or whatever and I wasn't really making a lot of money and I was struggling, like I was almost evicted from my fucking apartment. And she's like, you know, a lot of bloggers are this and that, but I have a lot, I have a hard time with agencies understanding my brand because they think I'm too, mm -hmm. I'm not wholesome, you know? They think I'm like, you're not preppy, you're not blonde, you're not like, you know, you're not like, PBS, you know? Yeah. So it's hard for brands to understand that. And she was like, there's certain ways to pitch you. There's certain ways to do things. And because she's also worked like in PR marketing for so long, she's like, there's something about you that's different. Even as a human being, like you said, like there's an it factor about me. And like, you know, you have a presence when you walk in a room that a lot of people don't have and shit. She's like, you shine when other people don't. And like, you have to have close people, a, knit, like a close knit circle around you to remind you who you are or whatever. Cause like instantly when you told me that, it gave me like 20 times more drive to go do something because yeah I got really sad that day oh. but it's like you have somebody who understands you and your brand and doesn't make you feel crazy like you're an outcast because I don't I usually don't feel like I'm an outcast but sometimes like but that's another thing sometimes people whether it's another blogger whether it's a reader whether it's a brand will try to diminish your shine mm -hmm. like everybody is special in certain ways but you need to figure out what your version of special is 